Thank you. Thanks for the invitation, Martin. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, in show business, they say you should kind of never follow, follow a child act. You can't kind of keep up. And at UCI, I would say don't follow the chancellor because you can't keep up. So, um, the chancellor did a great job. As Barney says, in addition to my day job as dean of the School of Information and Computer Sciences and as a statistician, uh, I work with a lot of different areas, but one of my passions is sports. And so Barney invited me to say a few words. Uh, it's a basketball night, to be sure, but the story starts with baseball. How many people either read or saw Moneyball? Okay. Okay. So um, if you read it, it's Michael Lewis, who's a fabulous, fabulous writer. If you saw the movie, it's Brad Pitt, who's an incredibly handsome and talented actor. Um, but that tells the story of how statistics ended up making a big difference in baseball. Interestingly enough, it focuses on the 2000 Oakland A's. Statistics in baseball goes back 100 some odd years. And there have been statisticians and other people playing around with baseball statistics for at least 50 or 60 years. And it's an interesting story that tells us a little bit about basketball, which is when they started, nobody in baseball took them seriously. And now every baseball team has an analyst. So um, statistics has moved from baseball, which is a very, very statistical game, to games that at first glance look a little bit harder, like football and hockey and basketball. But it turns out, as in any business, data tells, and it's having a big impact in basketball. So let's talk about basketball for two or three minutes before we head over to watching basketball. Um, the basketball analytic story has its Brad Pitt uh, in, in the general manager of the Houston Rockets, who's a guy named Daryl Morey. Daryl Morey was a basketball player, but he wasn't terribly talented basketball player, and he wanted desperately to change the way basketball was played. And he went to uh, Northwestern, he went to the Sloan School at MIT, he became a consultant because he wanted to earn enough money to buy a basketball team, but that didn't work out either. Um, he ended up working for a consortium that bought a team, helped them run it a little bit, and was offered the job as general manager of the Houston Rockets. And Michael Lewis, the same money ball Michael Lewis, wrote a spectacular article in the New York Times called the No Stats All-Star. It tells the story of Daryl Murray and Shane Battier. Does anyone know who Shane Battier is? Yeah. He's a basketball player from Duke and played in the pro for several teams, the Heat, the Grizzlies. Um, yeah, Shane Daddy is a good player, but his stats are nothing special. Never scored a lot. But he always played on winning teams. And Dal Murray looked at it and tried to figure out why, what's going on, and kind of got some principles and some new ways of measuring contributions. So it's not just points scored or assist or rebounds. But it's other things that you do to help your team. Kind of, uh, some of you may know from hockey or basketball, plus minus type number. Um, or you can try to figure out what group of five does best. Because unlike baseball, where if you have the best nine players, you're going to win because you have the best team. In basketball, folks have to play together. And there's some synergy there. So Darryl, um, Mike Darrell Moray came up with some interesting new ways of measuring it and got a lot of credit for that. Now, every story needs a villain. Um, so in this story, um, and some of you may have seen this because it just happened last week, um, people are always skeptical of a new approach, a statistical approach, because that's not about statistics. You've got to play the game. Um, Charles Barkley, everyone knows Charles Barkley. Charles Barkley is a famous NBA player and famous for being very outspoken. And last week, they, they were covering a game that the Rockets were playing. And Darren Ray started it. He tweeted, it's a pleasure to be at the stadium because I don't have to listen to Chuck Barkley spot out all his nonsense. To which Charles Barkley replied, and I had to write this down because it's perfect, um, the NBA is about talent. All these guys like Daryl who run these organizations who talk about analytics, they have one thing in common. They're a bunch of guys who've never played the game, they never got the girls in high school, and they just want to be part of the game. So it's one of those guys who never got the girls. I want to just say a few words. Well, so what's the truth? And I'm going to keep this very short, right? The truth is many of you work in all kinds of businesses. In any business that you work, it is incumbent upon you to get the best data that you can get and use it to make the best decisions that you can make. And that's really what, when we talk about sports analytics, nobody's trying to change the rules of basketball or do something different. Trying to get the best data that you can get and use it to make the best decisions. It remains true, as Charles Barkley said, that it's better to have more talent than less talent. <laughs> I think we can all get behind that. Even Coach Turner. 
Um, it's better to have more talent than less talent. But you can learn this stuff. And so I have kind of three quick examples. Um, one of which is, it, you don't have to work very hard. There's a website called 82games.com, if you're interested in this kind of thing. Um, they collected data over the last 20 years at each draft position, how the players that were drafted in that position did. What percent went on to have productive careers? And there's a definition of productive, but don't worry about that. And you get the value of the draft picks. And so, for example, the top five draft picks are successful in the way that this is measured, 67 percent of the time. The next five, 33 percent of the time. And the rest of the first round, less than 10 percent of the time. What, what's the point of knowing that? Well, you know, so GM calls you up now and says, I want to trade your number three pick for my number eight pick. How much is that worth? Well, you don't know that. You could guess, but you collect some data, and now you have an idea. I need two of those number eight picks to have the same chance that I had with my number three pick. So you give me your number eight this year, but you also got to give me your number eight next year, or whatever it is. So that's one use, right? Statistics. You build a better team because you figure stuff like that out. The second thing is, uh, there's a guy named LeBron James, some of you probably heard of him. Um, he's a pretty good basketball player. Um, he went through, he went through a remarkable run, although it's about to end. Uh, seven straight years of his shooting percentage going up. Now, by the time he went pro, he was already pretty good. Okay? So it's not like he got better at shooting. His shooting percentage got better as he played, especially with his coach in Miami, because they changed the place on the floor where he shot the ball. They looked at his shot charts, where he was shooting from, where he was making them, and where he was missing. And if you look at his shot, box, shot chart from his first time in Cleveland to Miami, you see amazing differences. Many fewer three-point shots. Fewer, it was symmetric in Cleveland. He's on the left block in Miami. And it was partly the coach, partly LeBron. It's a combination it takes, but they changed the way the game is played. It's a game of percentages. And if you can raise your shooting percentage 5%, it makes a big difference. And LeBron James did that. Now, I don't have an explanation for the last fact, which is he's gone back to Cleveland, then it's, well, it's gone down about 10 percentage points. So I don't have that explanation yet. I'm working on that. Um, the last thing I was going to mention, is too bad that the Chancellor had to leave, is uh, his former institution, never shall remain nameless, um, just kicked out a startup that's very cool. It's called Second Spectrum. Um, it's a couple of engineers, computer scientists. And what they are doing is the NBA and, and other sports are doing this too, but the NBA now has in every arena cameras that record what people call XYZ data. That is the position of every player and the ball at every instant in time. So X and Y are horizontal, vertical, and Z is height. Um, so they have that for every player at every point in time. And these guys at SC, oops, um, have kicked out, a, done a great, developed software to allow you to pick out. What happens when a player, say Steph Curry, gets the ball at the top of the key? And they collect from the video all of the instances in which that happens. And then you can say, what happens when he goes left? What happens when he goes right? When he goes left, we get 1.4 points. When he goes right, we get 1.2 points an hour. They're doing calculations like that and working with the teams and the coaches to figure out what to do. Right? And then, of course, it won't be long until defensive teams are figuring out the same thing. When he goes left, they're getting 1.4 points, we should make them go right. But these are the very simply and very quickly, because there's a game to be played across the street. These are the kinds of things that I refer to as nobody's trying to change the game, but by carefully recording what is happening and the success and failures at different places to different players, one can make a difference. It's not a big, you know, you'd rather, if you have LeBron James, it's better than not having LeBron James. But using the data to the best of your availability, to the best of your ability, will help your business, whatever it is, including running an NBA team. So enjoy the game and root on the Eagles.